so difficult to find. I know. But we're together now. We'll always be together. We'll always be young. We'll love each other. Forever. That is his promise. Forever. Forever. Right. Boogie man Ben coming round the band is Boogie Man Ben. Is Boogie Man Ben. Tribute. Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today's video is going to be part 14 of my quiet little tribute to Salem's Lot series. Um, this is something that I love doing. I try to do these in groups of four. Um, the four that I have planned right now, um, I have uh, Kenneth McMillan, who played uh, Constable Parkins Gillespie. I have Fred Willard, who played Larry Crockett. Uh, Julie Cobb, who played Boom Boom Bonnie, or uh, Bonnie Sawyer. And then for today, we're going to talk about uh, my lifelong crush from Salem's Lot, and that is the lovely Bonnie Bedelia. Now, growing up, you know, I mean, I was born in 74 and saw Salem's Lot for the first time in 79. I don't know how much Bonnie Bedelia registered with me at that point because I was too terrified of everything else when I first watched that miniseries. But over time, especially when uh, Salem's Lot would show up on cable television, and I watched it pretty frequently. In fact, if you asked my dad, you know, he would have told you how nuts I drove him because every Saturday that I stayed with him, which was pretty much every other weekend, I would watch Salem's Lot. So I think it was then that I really became infatuated with uh, the lovely Bonnie Bedelia, who played Susan Norton in that film. And um, at the time, my dad was married to his third wife, Janie. And uh, there was something about Janie. You know, as a little boy, you kind of develop crushes. And um, I always thought Janie looked like a little like Linda Carter, who I also had a crush on from the Wonder Woman television series, and Bonnie Bedelia. There was just things about both of those actresses that looked like my, uh, my stepmother. Uh, you know, my dad and Janie would break up when I was just about to turn nine years old and uh, he would marry his fourth wife who he's still with now and been with her for 40 years which is great for them my heart was always broken because him and Janie broke up it, it kind of it was almost like the first thing as a kid that really just fucked me up I almost felt like you know it's like and as I you know would watch the cut version which is the European cut of the of the miniseries Salem's Lot the movie um just you know how Ben looked at her I kind of looked at her that way too. There was just something about her that was so pure and, and beautiful. And as the movie plays out and Susan's fate is sealed, uh, once she decides to venture to the Marston house and eventually follow Mark inside and is taken by a Strager to meet the master, Mr. Kurt Barlow himself. Um, you know, I was as heartbroken as Ben in the movie. And uh, and then, of course, in the full miniseries, you see that he eventually has to stake her, taking her out um, because she isn't Susan anymore. She's a she's a vampire. She's a creature of the night. And I my heart broke just as much as Ben's did. And still to this day, as many times as I've watched Salem's Lot thousands of times, which may seem like a little bit of an exaggeration, but I kid you not, it has probably been thousands of times. My heart still breaks when she dies at the end. And I was so happy when she would appear in other things. Um, you know, I would see her in movies like Heart Like a Wheel. And I remember, you know, Anthony Edwards playing her son in it, who I would know from movies like Revenge of the Nerds and Gotcha and Top Gun and then eventually ER. Always been a big fan of him. And of course she played probably her most famous role, which is Holly McLean in Die Hard and Die Hard 2. Uh, opposite Bruce Willis and she kicked ass in that role and I was really really again might sound silly I just loved that marriage and for it to have just you know for the third movie that it was just over 
I just, it was just, it, it broke my heart, I guess, because I just don't like when people break up and it could be coming from uh, as a child of divorce, uh, that could have had a lot to do with it. But she made a, an indelible imprint on uh, my childhood. I also loved her in movies like Needful Things. Um, she was fantastic in that as well as Polly Chalmers. But uh, I hope everyone enjoys this little tribute uh, to the lovely Bonnie Bedelia. And afterwards, I'll come back with my closing thoughts. And here we go. Born Bonnie Bedelia Culkin on March 25th, 1948, the daughter of Philip Harley Culkin, a journalist, and Marianne Ethel Wagner Culkin, a writer and editor. Trained in ballet, her parents guided all of the children at one time or another into acting, which included Kit Culkin, Terry Culkin, and Candace Culkin. Bonnie herself attended Quintano School for Young Professionals in New York at one point, and Bonnie and Kit were on to appear on the local stage and TV. Brother Kit would later be known more for searing a handful of talented child actors and or stars like Macaulay Culkin, Karen Culkin, etc. It was Bonnie who was first spotted among the other acting siblings by a talent scout who happened to catch her in a school production of Tom Sawyer and encouraged her. She made her professional debut at age nine in a 1957 North Jersey Playhouse production of Deportarius and then was handed a full scholarship to study at George Balanchine's uh, New York City Ballet. But the acting bug had bitten, and after dancing in only four productions, including playing Clara in The Nutcracker, she decided to hang up her ballet slippers. She proceeded to study at both HB Studio and Actor Studio in New York. Bonnie nabbed a five-year role as a young teen, Sandy Porter, in the New York-based daytime soap Love of Life, 1951, Starting in 1961, during that time she took her first Broadway Isle of Children, a show that lasted but a week in March of 1962. She was also a placement in the established hit comedy Enter Laughing a year later. After appearing in the stage play The Playroom in 1965, she earned strong reviews for her touch and performance in My Sweet Charlie, for which she won the 1967 Theater World Award for Promising New Artist. In it, she played a pregnant young Southern girl on the lam with a black lawyer. Patty Duke recreated the role a few years later on TV and captured an Emmy. Films beckoned at this point and Bonnie made her debut, uh, lending top-notch support in The Gypsy Moss 1969, which reunited from here to eternity, stars Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr. She earned even better marks in the next two films, one performance simply haunting and the other one hilarious. Once again playing pregnant and once again delivering a touching pathos, she played the dirt poor marathon dancer who pitches songs for pennies and the almost mother of Bruce Stern's child in the superb award winning depression era drama They Shoot Horses Don't They. Uh, 1969. On the other end of the acting spectrum, she played Lowell Bride to Be in the side splitting comedy classic Lovers and Other Strangers in 1970. By this time, Bonnie had started concentrating on family values. She married scriptwriter Ken Luber on April 24, 1969, and bore him a son, Yuri, the following year. The time off to focus on motherhood, she had a second son, Jonah Luber, in 1976. Proved detrimental to her rising star, the remaining decade was uneventful at best, despite some fine showings and a splattering of TV movies. Her big comeback came again on the movie trail in the early 1980s when she absolutely nailed the role of race car driver Shirley Muldoney in, the Heart, in Heart Like a Wheel in 1983. She was surprisingly overlooked at Oscar time, however, despite the praise she received, despite Respected work in subsequent movies such as Violets Are Blue in 1986, The Prince of Pennsylvania in 1988, Presumed Innocent in 1990, and a running role as Bruce Willis's put-upon wife in Die Hard 1988 and its sequel. She found better and more frequent parts on TV. She found a niche in TV movies with social themes and tugged at more hearts and switched at birth 1991, A Mother's Right. Uh, the Elizabeth Morgan Story, 1992, Any Mother's Son, 1997, and To Live Again, 1998. In a change of pace, Bonnie joined the ensemble cast of the low-budget cult comedy Sorted Lives in 2000 as Latrell, a homophobic woman dealing with her mother's death, the imprisonment of her gay brother and her own son's coming out. The movie evolved into a TV series, Sorted Lives, the series 2008, which reunited her with original cast members Leslie Jordan and Olivia Newton-John. She re she repeated her role again in still another film, A Very Sorted Wedding, in 2017. 
More recent independent movie credits include Berkeley 2005, Her Secret Sessions 2016, The Secret of Rain and Lighting 2017, A Stone in the Water 2019. She also managed a regular TV series role as The Division in 2001 as a police captain and Parenthood in 2010 as a family matriarch opposite Craig T. Nelson. Divorced from the father of her two children, she is presently married to third husband or fourth, depending on your source of reference, actor Michael McRae, who she married in 1995. This reference is from Primal Fear, an interview with Toby Hooper done by Tony Earnshaw in his book, Studies in the Horror Film, uh, Salem's Lot. Um, when asking about Bonnie Bedelia, Toby Hooper says, Bonnie came in later in the casting. She was kind of fragile, at least that's my memory. I think she was perfect for the part. We had seen quite a few people from Kim Basinger to Angel Tompkins. There were so many because the casting had to be complimentary to everyone else. Bonnie delivered the goods. She totally amazed me. I do recall she felt she was shooting a European film. And then Tony asks, uh, Tony Earnshaw asks, uh, she's the one that pays the ultimate price and sums up what's happening in the town, especially in the epilogue sequence. Deep down, we all want to play a vampire. How did she react to that? And Hooper responds, vampires at that particular time had not been morphed into something else. I know she loved the last scene. This is from uh, Delirium Magazine, the 30th uh, Evil Issue is what it's called. It says, uh, she said boom, which is a interview that Lee Gambin did with Julie Cobb. And uh, when asked about some of the cast members, um, they ask, uh, there are so many great stars in the cast who were staples of the 70s, like David Soul, Lance Kerwin, Bonnie Bedelia, Jeffrey Lewis. What do you remember of those actors? Cobb responds with, Bonnie Bedelia was very intense. She was serious and committed and a brilliant actress. And even though, once again, I didn't share any scenes with her, I got to watch her work and she was truly dedicated to this piece. She was incredible to watch. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Like I said, you know, I got three more planned. Um, they're probably going to air over the course of this month and next month. I am uh, still working on uh, my book. I finished my first draft. I've done my first rewrite. I'm working on my uh, second rewrite, you know, just going over things and adding things, exposition, things like that. And it's really coming along great. Um, I'm really happy with where it's going. It's finally starting to feel like something tangible instead of a, just a bunch of random thoughts that I was just trying to get down on paper as fast as possible. Um, but yeah, I just want to make sure I keep doing these because they really do help with uh, the book that I'm writing. And I had to do something special for Miss uh, Bonnie Bedelia just because I, I've loved her for so long. Um, I think she's a terrific actress, beautiful woman. Even as she's aged, she's aged so gracefully. She's still gorgeous as she was when she was younger. And, uh, yeah, she will always be one of my first crushes and, uh, her, uh, her, uh, character's fate in Salem's Lot will always break my heart as much as I, you know, uh, as much as I love this movie and I've watched it and, and, you know, uh, time and time again, I always wish that there could have been a different outcome for Susan, but based, you know, on Stephen King's book, what happens to the character, you knew that the outcome was going to be bad in the miniseries. So yeah, it's heartbreaking, but so well done. And all of that goes to not only the fantastic direction by the late great Toby Hooper, but also Miss Bonnie Bedelia and what she brought to that role of Susan Norton. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope everyone's doing well. Leave me some thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you're a big fan of Bonnie Bedelia and her work outside of Salem's Lot. Um, um, I think everything I've seen her in, and I haven't seen every movie she's done, but everything that I've seen her in, um, she's just uh, shined, and uh, she's always been a beacon of light for me when I see her. So, so take it easy, stay scared as always, and remember, you can do nothing against the master. Peace. Hey, my fellow Fright Fiends, I just want to thank everyone for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you haven't yet subscribed and you'd like to, please hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I try to drop a video at least once or twice a week. Uh, the Horror Zone is a passion of mine, and it really makes me happy that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always.